Hello everybody, we're back for another block of the day today. We're going to be doing a left-sided ultrasound guided infraclavicular single shot nerve block for a left elbow ulnar nerve transposition and a carpal tunnel release. Um, we go over a couple of important things, uh, starting with what we usually do these infraclavicular blocks for. Uh, typically, uh, our two bread and butter blocks of choice for upper extremity surgery are interscalenes for shoulder surgery and infraclaviculars for just about everything else, you know, proximal arm and, and down all the way to the fingertips. Um, the things we'll focus on in terms of the procedure are the probe positioning and the patient positioning. Uh, we'll focus a little bit on the knobology of the, of the ultrasound screen itself. We're using a, a Terrason USmart 3200T tablet uh, touchscreen ultrasound for this one. So we'll show you a couple of the ways to adjust the image uh, using the touchscreen technology. Uh, and then lastly, we'll focus on a multiple injection technique uh, targeting all three cords of the brachial plexus, posterior, medial, and lateral cords. So we'll go ahead and get started. So the, the three elements of importance when it comes to doing an ultrasound guided infraclavicular block uh, have to do with your starting setup. Uh, before the needle's even inserted, uh, there's a couple of things you want to make sure to do. Uh, first of which is to find a, a place as lateral as you can, uh, starting it around the deltopectoral groove uh, where you can see the target structures uh, that we'll be focusing on in a moment. Um, if you can look closely at the probe, a Perpendicularity to the skin would be right about here. The first of the important steps I wanted to mention is a significant rock so that the probe is rocked back, rocking the beam back towards the needle insertion. That's going to help you pretty significantly when visualizing the, the needle as it's inserted. You can see that ro rocking motion a little better here. This is sort of plumb bob, perpendicular to the skin, rocking back towards where the needle is going to be inserted is really going to help you quite a bit with this procedure. Taking a zoomed back out look again, uh, the other component here, besides the ultrasound transducer, uh, is actually probably more importantly described as the first of the three, and that's the arm position change. We call this the Houdini clavicle position, because if you leave the arm at the side in a neutral position like we do supraclavicular blocks, the clavicle is essentially in the way, and so you're not able to insert the needle very far away from the probe, and therefore you're not going to visualize the needle very well. The simple repositioning of the arm over the head displaces that clavicle and so it's no longer in the expected needle path and you're able to take your probe, rock, like I mentioned in the previous step, towards the needle insertion and insert the needle farther away from the probe. And so the combination so far is a Houdini clavicle position and a rocking of the probe back towards the needle insertion. The third important step is more of a generic step. That's the step of inserting the needle farther from the probe than you're used to seeing in ultrasound images on various websites. Uh, and the reason for that is simple. The farther away from the probe you insert, the flatter the angle of entry. The flatter the angle of entry, the better the ultrasound waves are going to reflect off the needle as opposed to refract off the needle. Ideally, the needle is coming in at a 90 degree angle relative to the ultrasound beams. Now that's not always achievable, uh, but you want to try to achieve as close to that as possible every time you're doing one of these blocks. So starting now with a rear image, looking from over the, over the point of view camera here, we're going to show you the ultrasound screen with that initial position at or around the deltopectoral groove. So to start with, the first thing you're looking for is that axillary artery. And you notice that this patient has a generally a um, little bit of a thicker chest wall. And so the deep border of that axillary artery, which is dead center of the screen there, I'll point that out to you on the screen. The deep border of that artery is not visualized. So we're going to need to be deeper than the screen, which is now at a four centimeter depth. So go ahead and show you the depth marker is in the upper right side of the screen. If you simply just touch the, the tablet ultrasound screen on the right side of that depth marker, we can simply increase the depth to five. So it's a nice use of, of touchscreen technology there. And now we have a much clearer border, much clearer view of that entire artery, including its deep border, and including, equally importantly, the structure that's just deep to that artery, which is the posterior cord. And as I mentioned, we're going to be targeting three primary nerve structures with this particular nerve block. The three cords, the posterior cord, which lies at about 6 o'clock relative to the artery, the lateral cord, which typically lies at around you know, one or two, sometimes three o'clock relative to the artery, and the medial cord, which is somewhere usually the hardest to see, somewhere on the opposite side of the artery, the medial side of the artery, somewhere between about nine o'clock and 11 o'clock oftentimes. And oftentimes you don't see that uh, particular cord as well until after you've begun injecting. 
the most important starting point that your needle is going to want to insert, and there's plenty of evidence supporting a single injection without needle redirection at that single six o'clock position, just above that posterior cord. Uh, that's going to be at least our starting position. As I mentioned, there's data that says that you can put all of your local anesthesia there and have success without having to redirect your needle. I like needle redirection for a few reasons. I think it hedges your bets a little bit. It allows you to put a little local here, a little local anesthesia there. It allows you to enhance, better than diffusion is able to do, the spread of local anesthesia around the nerves. I also think that the multiple injection technique allows you to uh, lessen the amount of local anesthesia that you're depositing in any one place and therefore, if you are inadvertently intravascular, lessens the potential likelihood of a direct intravascular injection. If you do inject, you're injecting, say, 25 milligrams of local anesthetic as opposed to 150 to 200 milligrams of local anesthetic. So I think there's several reasons we still do prefer the multiple injection technique. So starting at that location where we see axillary artery with posterior cord just deep to it, I'm going to clean the skin with chlorhexidine. Wipe off any of the residual ultrasound gel that's up there. And we'll insert a little skin wheel of local anesthetic several centimeters away from the probe. Now notice this is about, about a four centimeter target, so we're going to insert a little bit further away than, than average for other blocks. Now, sir, you're going to feel a bee sting here, okay? Big pinch and a burn. And we'll actually insert the needle until it's hubbed. Make an effort to try to find it on the ultrasound screen. But just try to infiltrate the, the tract that that local anesthesia, that needle ultimately is going to take. So now we'll be inserting a 22 gauge, 8 centimeter stimulating echogenic needle from Payunk through that same tract that we just infiltrated. Insertion about 45 degrees of the skin until you pop through the skin. Now I'm inserting from right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. And you can see on the bottom right, bottom left, the positioning here. And in order to enhance the visualization on the screen, I'm going to go ahead and switch to a full screen ultrasound image. And you'll see a very nice echogenic needle coming in from right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. And we've got our ultrasound stimulator at 0.53 to use a dual guidance technique of ultrasound visualization and nerve stimulation. I want to get just under that six o'clock position with the needle. And typically we'll get a twitch shortly thereafter. Okay. And when we get to a position where we feel like we ought to get a stimulation current, I don't want to jab too much in and out with the needle. Um, I'd pr much prefer just confirm that we are in fact looking at nerve tissue or just not use ultrasound, at, not use nerve stimulator at all. In this case, we'll sort of hedge our bets and just turn the stimulating current up and see if we can capture a stimulation current at a little higher, stimulation at a little higher current. So we're up to about 0.8 right now. Mm -hmm. We got a little bit of a hand twitch. So he probably just doesn't have the normal conduction pattern. This is an important learning point. You don't necessarily need you know, to get a perfect twitch between 0.3 and 0.5, especially with ultrasound, especially when you're using a multiple injection technique. Extension twitch there at the wrist, which is effectively a radial type twitch, a posterior cord type twitch. And ask for it and give five cc's there, please. Okay, the twitch disappears after one cc of local anesthetic. I'm going to go ahead and give another 5 cc's, make it a total of 10. You can see the artery, the boundary below the artery is becoming much clearer because the contrast of black local anesthetic versus the white nerve below it is much clearer. So that's 10 cc's total. So what I'm going to do is redirect a little flatter so I can walk along that deep border of the artery a little clearer for that third of 5 cc aliquots. Another 5 cc's there. So I can get a little closer to the underside, the deep side of that medial cord with the third of 5 cc aliquots, total of 15 so far. Okay, so effectively we've given 15 cc's, half of our total dose of 30 cc's of half percent plain bupivacaine under the artery. And the other half I'm going to give adjacent to the artery to the right where the lateral cord typically is, 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 exists, and then over the top of the artery towards the medial cord. So I'll pull back my needle and I'll flatten out a bit.
and see if I can't elicit a bicep twitch. Interestingly, I don't see the lateral cord necessarily in its classic position there. But I do see quite a bit of nerve tissue over the top of the artery. So without real hesitation, since I don't really see any stimulation there, and I'm already at 0.84, I'm not going to initiate my, st my injection there necessarily, except to start a hydrodissection over the top of the artery towards where I see very clear nerve tissue at the 10 o'clock position. So I'll start a slow 5cc injection there, and I'll hydrodissect over the top of the axillary artery. It's deepening as I go. No longer terribly concerned about the stimulating current as I am about the visualization just deep to my needle there. So it's a total of 20. You have another five cc's there, please. It's a total of 25. I have five cc's left. You can see as I can go a little bit off plane of the needle, some pretty clear nerve tissue with better contrast now with black local anesthesia around it at around the 10 o'clock position. And then to complete the block, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't target lateral cord now that I have some local anesthesia everywhere else. And as best as I can tell, there seems to be nerve tissue a little bit more lateral on the right side of the needle, excuse me, right side of the artery, that I'm going to go out and try to target. Okay, and as expected there, a little bit deeper than the usual position, I'm eliciting a twitch. Okay, a subtle biceps twitch there, and we'll give the last five cc's there adjacent to that lateral cord. Mm -hmm. See it pushing up on the lateral cord there. And we'll get one last picture for billing purposes. Visualize posterior cord about the six o'clock position. Now that there's local anesthesia around it, you can visualize more clearly the lateral cord at that two o'clock position. And now that there's local anesthesia around it, you can visualize the medial cord more clearly at about the 10 o'clock position. All right, that concludes today's block of the day, a left-sided infraclavicular block, single shot for elbow surgery, ulnar nerve transposition. Uh, a couple of good learning points from that block. Uh, first, we demonstrated the, the setup, the, the three steps of importance that Houdini arm position, which moves the clavicle out of the way, allows you to insert the needle further. Uh, the probe, which is not only a plumb bob to the skin position, but a rocking angle, really significant rocking angle back towards the needle. Uh, and then a the needle insertion, which is several centimeters farther than you might otherwise uh, have previously done or felt comfortable doing uh, with your insertion. You put those three together and it makes this block a lot easier to do. Uh, I think there was another couple of uh, important learning points during the procedure itself. Uh, for one, you can notice that we, uh, from the get-go, had to increase our depth. We expected to be able to see the axillary artery at about four centimeters depth. Instead, uh, even with firm pressure, we really needed all of that five centimeters of depth uh, to see this. Uh, particular series of nerves and, and, and vessels. Uh, and that's pretty typical with an infraclavicular. It's usually about one to two centimeters deeper than any given supraclavicular block for any given patient. Uh, so that was a, a, an important thing to, to make a note of. The other thing to make a note of is that the cords aren't exactly in the, in the exact location that you're expecting them. We didn't get that classic twitch at the six o'clock position that we'd expect from a posterior cord. And also, perhaps because of some underlying uh, subclinical neuropathy, hard to say for sure, uh, but we didn't get a twitch in that 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 position, even though we were clearly adjacent to the nerve, simply turning the twitch monitor up to 0.83 and enhancing the spread of local anesthesia with a multiple injection technique uh, allowed us to, to, to get by that problem. Uh, what you want to avoid doing is is the, the sewing machine effect, we call it, going in and out with that needle several times um, if you have uh, an inability to get a twitch when you expect to get a twitch based upon seeing the nerve touching the, touching the, uh, being touched by the needle. Uh, so that was another important point. Uh, and then the last point was the lateral cord was not where we expected it to be. We completed the block with a lateral cord, with a lateral cord injection third after first picking off the posterior cord below the artery, second picking off medial cord both below the artery, below the medial cord, and above the artery above the medial cord, and then targeting a biceps twitch, which is what you'd expect from a lateral cord, uh, in combination with visualization of needle uh, near nerve, needle near post uh, lateral cord, 
uh, and completing the block, uh, completing the infraclavicular block by doing a lateral cord block last. So we got the posterior cord, the medial cord, the lateral cord, several redirections, several good learning points. Hope it was helpful. Stay tuned for the next block of the day next time. Thanks.